Hello there. Over the last couple of days, I've had a few people ask me about how you would go about countering those kind of people who don't feel like voting is right for them this election. They might not be enthused by a political leader, or they might not like the policies that are on offer from the various political parties, or they just can't be bothered. They don't see how their vote is important. And well, it's really kind of an interesting thing to look at, at because they're kind of all mixed in together. There's a lot of factors that come into play, for example. But there's also a couple of things that you need to remember, like the fact that you are very seldom going to find a political party that 100% agrees with absolutely everything you do, unless that political party is headed by somebody like Brian Tamaki and you are Brian Tamaki. When it comes to the bigger political parties who aren't run by crazy grifters, the policies tend to be a lot broader, and the trick is to actually find a party whose policies mostly speak to you, and take the country in a direction that you think it should be taken in, and using your vote to give them power to go to the negotiating table with somebody like Labour or National to basically bring them into line with your thinking. Politics is a game of compromise. There's 120 people in the House who make the decisions that run this country. And if something like a small minor party like the Greens or ACT have more votes, that gives them more negotiating power to bring in their policies. So it's definitely important that you look at the direction that these parties are going to want to go in and what they bring to the table. And you might be happy with Labour or National. You might be happy with the Greens and ACT or Te Pāti Māori or TOP. That's fine. They have no power if you don't vote for them. And they need to have that power to be able to make those choices. The other thing to remember is this is our first election in a while where we haven't had a really well-known figurehead that mobilizes voters in some way. It's not John Key, it's not Jacinda Ardern, it's two middle-aged white dudes named Chris, and I get that that is kind of boring, but we don't vote for a prime minister. We vote for the party and their policies. Just remember that. You might not necessarily be enthused by the party leaders, but they're there to make sure those policies get done. So push those things that you really believe in. The other thing that's also really important to note is just how powerful your vote is. If we take a look at the 2014 election voter turnout, which was the last one we had before Jacinda Ardern was Prime Minister and mobilised a whole bunch of those youth voters, you can see really carefully here that people under the age of 35 don't go out and vote, which means that those people over the age of 55 have a much more powerful say in the makeup of Parliament. But if we take a look at the breakdown of this year's polling results from The Guardian that came out yesterday, those people under the age of 35, they tend to be much more in line with the Green Party and their values, and much less in line with things like New Zealand First and their genital police force, as opposed to those 55 plus voters who would not only see Winston in Parliament, but there with a number of MPs, and that is just downright dangerous. Your vote can stop that from happening. Really simple. Really easy. And your vote, especially if you're under the age of 35, is really important that we get out there and have it heard. So please, if you're considering not voting, maybe reconsider that. Because it really could be down to the difference between people being able to live their best lives, and genital police at sports games.